Give her, give her, give her time to relax and chill, because she deserves it. Marth does a lot of work with Rowan, man. The BDW, how are you, bud? Good I'm to here. see you. Oh, we also got to level up. Oh no, we're good. We're good. We leveled up. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna do this bounty. Oh, and then we're gonna go do um the fight for Cade Nua. Yes. Oh my lord. Uh, <laughs> poor a lot. I think he's. Yep. <laughs> yep. He is dead. Um. What happened here? Ouch. Uh, let's go ahead and get you up. Here, Vias, let's go ahead and get the storm going. Uh, was I hitting? There we go. Uh. Curse my. That's it. That's not. That's it. Keep it going, man. Pile in that deeps. Pile in that deeps. I think we got Bada boom. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. A lot of stuff there, too. I'm here. Man, that was a stalwart quest, too. That's pretty wild. We'll go turn that in real quick. Oh, what's all this? Okay, good. Co, I love the picture that Lena has in her Twitter uh, picture profile. Oh, did she change it? Or is it still the... Uh, let me take a look here. I think I know which one it is. Yep. Yeah, that's that was a great one. That was a great one. She, she, she has gotten surprisingly good at that. <laughs> All right, let's run over to here. We'll turn this in real quick, and then we're going to go do the Cade Nua battle. Get that knocked out. Oh, by the way, I didn't actually post this earlier. Uh, very much appreciate... Wait, I have unrepaired walls at Cade Nua. Do I? No, we're good. We got them repaired. Thank you, though. Thank you. Yeah, we have 50. We're good. Um, I actually forgot to put this up there. We have a tweet up for the big PoE stream tomorrow. Uh, really appreciate any retweets, because unfortunately, as you guys know, like I had... Pretty, pretty small notification on this. So uh, let's see, RT for a free letho purr on your face. I uh, really appreciate any Twitter users out there helping spread the word. Uh, okay, Aska. I'm here to collect on the road with bounty. Awesome and awesome. There's a group of Lagafeth causing trouble in Whitestone Hollow. Oh, oh, there's new ones? Whoa, dude. I thought that was it. Um. Okay, well, I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna save these for later. If we don't get some bounties done before Poe two, I'm okay with that. But I do want to make sure we get these major quests done. So let's go down to Cade Nua now, and we're gonna protect it. Also, I think we're gonna pick up. But for who? I want to pick up Grieving Mother. But I have no idea who we, who we would replace. I think I'm going to... Let's talk to Grieving Mother real quick. Um, and see if we can get at least the next step of her quest triggered. Bounties are tasks. They're even lower on the list in quests. Yeah, yeah. Tasks, I'm not really... Not as beautiful as yeah. the Anguithin ruins near my home, but your fortress is impressive in its own little way. Hmm. 
That's super rude. It's okay, though. Oh, also, um, while I'm here, we need to go down to the Adra Hand. Level 8. We'll do this real quick before we do this quest. Because we need to take this, uh, this thing the dragon gave, gave us to the hand. And then um, put that on there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You need to talk to Grieving Mother and rest a few times before the vision you get about her. Repeat that a few times and you'll finish her quest. Oh, great. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Quick save. Oh, the upper hand on level... Oh, it's not this one. Oh. Oh, thank you, chat. I'm sorry. Okay, whoops. Cool, cool, cool. Chat said I went to the wrong hand. There's another hand on level one. Did I kill the dragon? No, we're going to free the dragon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I decided not to kill the Adra Drake. Yep. Same way we also... See, this is an interesting run because we saved the dragon at Hylia. We are freeing the dragon down here. And I don't think we can free the Alpine Dragon, but I almost wish we could because I would totally free them too. I'm all I'm pro dragon. My political stance is pro dragon. I like more dragons. I think more dragons should be around. And uh, yes, I, I'm a pro dragon kind of guy. Vote Co for pro dragon. Okay. Place the amulet on the statue. As you look on, the Adra gem begins to glow faintly and then steadily, gleaming like the dragon's own golden eye. The amulet is warm to the touch when you retrieve it and seems to hum with power. I'm here. Okay. And we will do that part later. Even when the dragon is evil, dragons are never evil. They're just misunderstood. If you were like one of five of your race left, you'd be pretty grumpy too. Last thing the deer would need is another foreign colony. <laughs> so racist. More dragons equals more dragon treasure. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Garrett Jack says, any plans for St. Jude this year? Yes, we are going to be doing some St. Jude charity stuff this year. I don't know what or when exactly, but we will be doing some St. Jude uh, charity stuff this year. Yep, yep, yep. Let's do a hard save here. Because I have no idea what I'm getting into with this. I've heard it's pretty difficult. It's time, marshal, assemble the army, and march on Yenwood Field. Wait, do I need to, like, claim... Let's talk about my army. Where am I getting my troops? Okay. I received a message from the Knights of the Crucible. Believe it or not, your friends in the Flames at Whisper Clan have heard about your troubles with Lord Gathbin. Matron Barragan said something about a vision. Okay. And we've made Red Saren friends. Awesome! A Derek is sending an army. Or a unit. Cool! Okay, so that's why we wanted to wait until after the second DLC. Um, I'm good, right? There, there's nothing else I want to do? Can we go ahead and start this? There's any other fun stuff I can do. Uh, Minor 49, we did finish the... Um, we did finish this. The, the last rank in the hammer gave this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Did I pay the 10k gold? I think so. I want to say that I did. I think I already paid the 10 pay, the 10k gold. Yeah, with your willingness to spend coin, we should attract some veteran warriors. All right, let's do it. Pretty excited about this. Where's my Coast Smart emote? Uh, you know, I've thought about making a Coast Smart emote. We don't really have a spot for it right now, but maybe down the road. Maybe down the road.
As you crest the small hill overlooking Yenwood, Lord Gathman's army is a flurry of activity, scurrying to and fro. Even from this distance, you can hear the drums of war beating their steady cadence designed to intimidate their foes while organizing the rank and file into battle formation. You've arrived just in time. Lord Gathman's forces are beginning to move and attack is imminent. Expect your forces. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Local militia constitutes the majority of the army, but veteran soldiers have organized the ranks and walk amongst the young, unseasoned warriors, offering advice or the occasional joke. They cheer, striking sword to shield as you pass, in thunderous approval of their lord. Among the troops, a small group of warriors shines brighter than the others, crucible knights, standing tall with gleaming plate armor and armed with spear and shield. They stand at attention, spear centered as you pass. You pass a group of crag ogres, working themselves into a frenzy. They carve jagged wounds across each other's chests and back, their war cries echoing throughout the camp. Your troops give them a wide berth. A squad of Ritzaran pathfinders make ready for the upcoming battle. War bows are strung and quivers are filled as you pass. One of the archers spots you and whistles. Silently, each of them places a closed fist over heart in salute. Any idea what Gathman is planning? Marshal Foreman strokes his chin. His ultimate objective is to face you in battle and to be seen defeating you. I doubt he is foolish enough to challenge you to single combat, of course. Sound the horn, it's time to finish this. Marshal Forwin begins barking orders and your troops quickly form up. Gathman's army follows suit as a deer and war drums echo across the field. Within a few moments, the marshal raises a brass horn uh, in the visage of a mighty boar to his lips. He looks at you expectantly. Raise your weapon above your head and scream at the top of your lungs. That is exactly what I would do in this situation. Your troops bellow across the field, pounding weapons to shield as the martial horn sounds. Dozens of bowstrings twang in unison behind you as your archers unleash a hail of arrows at Gapin's army. The missiles hiss through the air with deadly accuracy, felling scores of enemies. In a bold move, Gathman points his sword towards your position, giving an unheard order. His infantry shields raised charge the field. Your infantry charges headlong into the enemy infantry in the center of the field. The cacophonous... What a great word. Sound of metal on metal it's, uh, is nearly deafening as the two forces collide. The fighting is fierce and the screams of dying numerous. Led by veteran warriors rally to your cause, the troops fight valiantly and appear to be holding their ground. The battle thus far appears to be a stalemate. Then, uh-oh, a group of Adiran battle mages emerges from behind the enemy lines. They begin weaving their hands in unison with practiced precision. Suddenly, waves of arcane fire erupt among your troops. The acrid smell of smoke and burning flesh is nearly overwhelming. From the left flank, a unit of Ruatai Berserkers, clan in plate armor and wielding greatswords, begin to collapse the left side of the line. The ground is thick with the dead as they press their advantage. Meanwhile, bleak walker paladins, dressed in dark armor and carrying sword and shield, stride back and forth behind gap in lines, rallying his warriors and extorting them to fight harder, exhorting them. As a battle rages, Marcher Foreman looks at you for orders. Study the battlefield. Your troops fight bravely as your lines are holding for the moment. Gapin's army is slowly pushing you back and casualties are mounting. Defeat is likely. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Um. I, I want to go for the mages. We need to deal with the battle mages. Order the Red Seer and Pathfinders to give them a few volleys. Accurate arrows fire from each sirens, disrupt and fell many of the battle mages, but arcane defenses thwart some of the arrows. The survivors retreat from the battle and move out of range, but not before hurling a volley of fireballs into your archer's ranks. The screams of dying echo in your ears as the red sirens are set afire. Damn it. As the battle mages rages, Master Foreign looks for you for orders. Take out the berserkers next. Send in the crucible knights. Nope, send in, let's do ogres to berserkers. The Crag Ogres fearlessly charge the Berserker enemies. The fighting is brutal as both Ruatai and Ogre Warrior refuse to give ground, but the size and strength of the Ogre Shock Troops proves too much for the smaller Ruatai. When the smoke clears, not a single Berserker is left standing. The Bleak Walkers must die, send in the Crucible Knights. At the sound of Marshal Foreman's horn, the, the leader of the Crucible Knights, a Justicar with a long graying beard, issues a challenge to the Bleak Walker Captain. The steel-clad formations clash and battle furiously. Both heavily armored units fare well against the other, but the Crucible Knights appear to have the upper hand. The heavy losses inflicted on Gathman's troops have clearly lifted morale. Your troops push forward with renewed vigor while Gathman's army is slowly losing ground. Victory is within your grasp. Everyone on me, charge. As the remainder of your forces charge, a horn sounds in the distance. A new contingent of warriors crest a nearby hill. As Gathbin's reinforcements charge headlong into the fray, his other troops cheer triumphantly. Shouts of joy soon turn to roars of dismay as the new arrivals begin attacking Gathbin's infantry. 
You make out the figure of Captain Emery leading the charge in her dark armor. She kills one of Gatvin's men with a well-aimed pistol shot before running another through, a, uh, through with a gleaming rapier. She fells one foe after another, pausing briefly at one point to salute you with her sword from across the battlefield. The betrayal by the reinforcements breaks the will of Gatvin's regulars. They drop sword and shield and flee the battlefield in a full rout. Co! Lord Gatvin strides through the carnage, his elite guard accompanying him. The day can still be mine if I take your head. Come now, it's time I put you down like the dog you are. Here I am, Gatvin, let's finish this. Oh, hell yeah! Here we go. Sir. Oh my god, there was a firefight! Uh, okay. Where is Gathbin? There you are. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna work on basically just locking. Ooh. Let's try this spell. Is there anybody who can turn this? I don't think so. Let's try it right there. Woo! <laughs> 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 Dude, this is a mess. <laughs> I love it. We are decimating these dudes. Oh my lord. <laughs> Woo! Wow. Lord Gatvin lies dead before you, his army scattered, bloodied and exhausted. Your remaining troops look to you, swords raised high in victory, chanting your name, Ko Ko Ko. Wow. Holding the hem of his robe as he steps over several bodies, Chancellor Warren approaches you. Although his face is pale and he looks as if he will be sick at any moment, he forces a smile. Also, thanks chat. Lord Co! While I'm grateful this dispute is finally over, it is regrettable so many lives were lost in the process. Gappin should have just been reasonable from the start. He gags involuntarily as his silk boot brushes against a severed head. In any event, as a legal arbiter of Errol Bademar, I'm here to inform you that you've been declared a Thane of the Deerwood, and Cade Nua has been recognized as your domain. It shall forever be thus, and will pass down to any descendants you may have in the future. Of course, now that your claim has been upheld, you are expected to forward a small portion of your taxes you collect to your rightful lord, Earl Bademar. Sounds reasonable. Tell Earl Bademar I am grateful for his assistance. I'll make sure his taxes are collected with regularity. I got plenty of money. That's just fine. It appears my work is done. Feel free to visit the palace if he steps in a pile of entrails with a wet squish as he turns to leave. On second thought, I'll come and visit you. Yeah, yeah, perhaps in a year or three. Lord Co, it's been an honor to serve you. I'll be making my way back to Garen's grasp. The Earl has some urgent business for me there, unfortunately. Can I talk to my girl? Is that that's where's Emery at? Should you ever find yourself that far north, please feel free to call on me. I'd love to trade war stories with you over a cup or two. He grasps your hand briefly in a firm grip and then turns on his heel. Man. I'm Ooh. here. Ooh. That was good. That was real good. That was a lot of fun. Grants Lord's authority once per stronghold turn? Oh, that's interesting. I've I've never seen a once per stronghold turn item. Hmm. Cool. Yes. Alright, did we get everything? I think we did. Oh. Gotta get that ten gold. Especially now that I'm paying taxes, right? Uh, okay. I think we're good, man. I think we're good. That was awesome. Okay, that was that was freaking great. Um, let's go back to Cade Nua. Hey, Kawa! Thank you for the $10 tip, dude. Really appreciate that. Thank you for that nice message as well. Uh, Alio with the $10 tip as well. Hey, Kobe, been loving the streams. Been in lurk mode for a while now due to work. This is for Lena. Happy birthday with a $10 tip. Thank you for that, my friend. Thank you, thank you. 
Uh, yeah, we got a new quest to do too. Mort with the 300 cheer. Happy Last birthday to your lovely and very patient wife. Oh, you're telling me. Uh, Expear Seed with the brand new Prime sub. Gentius with the 28, dude. Awesome and thank you. Uh, now on to Battlemix. Should I start a 65 hours of PoE run or just jump into PoE 2? Um, Gentius, to be honest, what I'll probably do is when we start PoE 2 tomorrow morning, um, anytime we come up to any situation where I feel like we need to know about PoE 1, I will explain it. So if you have not been watching our PoE run, and you are worried that you are going to miss things in our PoE 2 run, but you plan on watching the PoE 2 run here, this is what I can promise you. Anytime we encounter something in PoE 2 that references PoE 1, and I remember it, I will make sure to note it. So if we ever get up to a point where there's like a reoccurring character, I will introduce that character, I will tell you about what we did with them in PoE 1, and then we'll continue in PoE 2. So, yeah. If you're planning on watching the PoE 2 run, don't worry about catching up with PoE 1, I got you covered. Okay, so we need to free this dragon next. Yeah, I know, Snapcat Bandit says it's adorable, Co thinks he's gonna remember something. Yeah, we'll do our best. We'll, I, I'm sure chat will help me too. Chat will help me too, hopefully. Uh, let's go do this dragon quest next. I want to make sure we get this done. The Black Meadow. Oh, oh, also, while we're here, let's grab Grieving Mother. And we'll grab her for... I wish I could... I'd totally replace her with Ko right now. Um, eh, we can do it for hey, Heroes. Wow, Hopefully we won't run step. into something too rough. Oh, we got to get this quest going, too. Kana. And then we got to do Sagani's quest after that. Uh... Okay, we'll just we'll just grab these. I'm I'm not going to use too much of hers, so I'm not fronting that too much here. I'm just leveling her up right now. Does she have Gunner Marksman? Sure. Mm -hmm. Summon weapon? Oh, okay. I don't need that. Well, we'll just get him anyway. Why not? More options. Sure. Okay. Good. Yes? Uh, let's talk to her. Your mind comes bearing questions, Watcher. You addressed me as Watcher when we met. Do you know what a Watcher is? There's a slow chill, and for a moment it seems as if she's going to fade from your vision, as if she can't bear to be seen. The title came unbidden. I do not know why I spoke of it. Yet it seemed the right mantle, a familiar one. Marvelous and Bricks, thanks for your support, guys. Yet I do not know where it came from, from where it came. If I had given offense, oddly enough, it feels like she's not speaking to you. It feels like she's speaking to an audience. The air takes on a curious edge, a chill, which persists for a sharp moment, then fades into a dull fear. If I've given offense, forgive me, forgive me. You you would know more than I. Have you encountered Watchers before? I, I do not know. It is an old feeling. I do not know where it stems from. It was a word that arose when you saw me. It is said Watchers see much that others do not, and I have been hidden from the eyes of others for some time. How is it no one can see you? Their eyes see me, but their minds will not remember past the call. A call? My face is like the call of a newborn, hiding the face beneath. And for my body, I am able to wrap myself as a mother cradling her child. I am here, as you see me. But to them, their eyes see only the cloak that I wear. A peasant mother, dirty, shabby, not worth knowing. As a watcher, you see more than others. To the eyes of most. I am as unseen as the spirits you share memories with. It's almost like she has a glamour thing going on. How are you able to affect minds? I, devote the flow, I divert the flow of their senses down a different path, to a place easily forgotten. It is not unwelcome when one does not desire the presence of others. The surface of their minds register a figure, but the memory slips away. They see a woman, but there is no desire for conversation, no desire for any questions, and I have none to ask. When we first met, how was I able to enter your dream? I do not know. What what do you speak of? If you were in my thoughts, I could not feel your presence, nor do I know what you saw there. Oh. Wait! Who did this? 
A hundred dollar anonymous tip, birthdays and love and yay? Thank you, whoever that was. It feels super weird when I can't actually thank the person who just gave me a hundred dollars for playing Pillars of Eternity. But thank you, I really appreciate that. And um, thank you for the birthday present for my wife. That is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it's yay. <laughs> Thanks. Ranger. As she speaks, you suddenly feel an odd sensation in your mind like the blood of the hunt welling up in you. You suddenly realize that whether she permits it or not, you could enter her dream and observe it without her ever knowing. There's something about her mind like a weapons rack where you could reach in and draw forth a blade if you wished and keep it as your own. What? Um. And suddenly you find yourself back in her, your, present thoughts. Though you were away for but a moment, she seems unaware of your diversion of thought. It may be one of your gifts, an ability to walk in memories as easy as someone walks upon the ground. May I try again? You feel her slowly nod, though she makes no motion. My mind is open to you, as it was before when we met. I could not stop you if I wished. I do not want to impose. I seek your permission. My memory is not as it was. Okay, all of a sudden I am dramatically more interested in what the... Like, I... I they haven't really clicked how interesting a character this is until now. But she's like completely unique. As opposed to anyone else we've met in the game. My memory is not as it was. Much has been forgotten. If you would walk in my thoughts, I have nothing hidden. Her thoughts feel strangely apologetic and welcoming both at once. Perhaps you may learn something that will strengthen you. Or a clue to what has caused this terrible burning of the fields of souls and halted Barris wheel. Well, we already know that, but... Her mind gives way. Your passage almost unnoticed as you enter her before circling the memory you shared when you first met. And suddenly you are, a, you are calm. You are on a plateau, almost the height of a tower, several stories high. The plateau is like a table lying beneath a clear sky, beneath the plateau surrounding it in all directions, a forest hazy with mist, although whether it is actual mist or distance is a recollection. Oh, my eyes are hurting. Uh, resting in the curve of a natural arch above you is a great copper bell, half again the size of a man, hanging at attention, as if looking down on you and the events unfolding before you. The plateau is soaked in the sun, and the rock beneath you is rough and warm. The sky forms a cradle around you. You feel different, not disembodied, but you feel your body, your physical contours have changed along with the surroundings. And you hear a soft series of chimes, like wind chimes. At the sound, the scene gains color and texture, as if the sound is beckoning you gently forth, filling your senses and thoughts, like a mist roiling softly into a sealed chamber. And focus on the chimes. The chime coaxes you deeper into the memory, and you're certain it is a memory, a warm one. You're on the stone of the plateau, your knees on the warm texture of the ground, silver white shimmering like Adra. The plateau is formed of it, glistening in the sun. A, a plateau of Adra. We've never seen that. You can feel the heat on your skin, your wrists, and your hands. Your hands are in motion. Weaving, not thread, but gathering, tenderly moving along the first movements of Barrett's wheel. Your hands are wet. Your hands are upon the flesh of a newborn child. And Oh yeah, we've, we've read this before. The hands you're wearing and inhabiting have done this many times, and they're practicing confident. Focus on the child. Yeah, draw the child forth. Surrender the child. If you're if you're wondering why these these uh, things are already gray, we've done this. The child is here. The child is safe. I walked again in your dreams, thoughts, and I believe your memories. A mixture of curiosity and fear wells up between you. She raises her left hand, the chiming at her wrist quelling the rise within her. She is frightened, but curiosity anchors her. And what did you see in my memories? I would hear you speak of them. The dream, the memory I saw upon meeting you, it was you helping give birth to a child. There is silence, and as your breath falls still, you hear the faint cry of a child in the distance, a newborn child, almost exactly like what you heard in the dream. As you listen, the grieving mother raises both her hands as if weaving, her wrists chiming as she does, in a semblance of gentle, of the gentle turning she provided while the newborn was crowning. To your surprise, you recognize the motions and the words from the memory, even as they are new to you. As she weaves her hands through the air in front of her, the child's cries grow still. Yet the sound of the chimes weaves almost hypnotically into your thoughts. The sky seems sharp and clear, and you feel as if you are towering over your surroundings, as if kneeling atop a great pillar, just as she did in the memory. To your surprise, the grieving mother falls as if her strings were cut, and her knees crack hard against the ground. Her hands never cease moving in the air, the chimes echoing her movements. In a ragged voice, you hear her speak. The voice is that of a much older woman. 
than the one before you, harsh, almost desperate. Tell me what you saw. Show me what you saw. Where were you? Her eyes, now terribly sharp and real, are filmed with white, silver white, like Adra. What is going on here, man? A mountain ledge, I think? It was high up snow, I think. She leans back as if looking back at the sky, but her eyes are closed, the film building on them. With a slow intake of breath, you feel time become quiet around you. I do not feel the memory. I do not know if it is mine, but her hair falls across her features again like a veil, and she nods, not with her chin, but with a push in her mind. But thank you for trying. I want to talk about the memory again. 